never stolen anything from the Met. That's not true. Oh, nope, nope, nope. I am, I am not talking about that costume. All right, now can we really talk? I'm Joyce DiDonato. I'm here to talk about my history and costumes at the Metropolitan Opera, a favorite topic. Cherubino, I think it was 2005, don't judge me. The moment that you're called into your fitting at the Metropolitan Opera, you go up onto the second floor and you're walking through rows and rows and rows of amazing costumes. In my case, this pale blue jacket. But you open up the jacket to put it on and you see the list of people who have worn the jacket before you. And that's the moment where you go, oh, I'm at the Met. Rosina. I do remember it was a wild wig. That corset was hardcore. There was one moment that I had to flop over the edge of the couch, which was very Rosina, and kick my heels up in the air. And the head of wardrobe came down, and said, I think we need to loosen the corset a little bit because it was doing its job. And when I f <laughs> flopped over, yeah, it was, anatomy was an issue at that point. What can I say? I loved playing Isolier. I had the leather coat to end all leather coats. I look at myself in the mirror and I think, yeah, I'd go out with you. So there's the point then, of course, that famously the three of us are in bed together. My jacket is off. My sleeves are, no, actually, I think my jacket was still on. I can't remember. Cue the production photo. And the three of us are in there. And that is kind of not possible, at least in my world, without a great costume. What stays on the Met stage stays on the Met stage. I want that leather jacket. I didn't steal it. I didn't. I've never stolen anything from the Met. That's not true. The one souvenir that I took from the Met is the I'm married to Christ ring of Sister Helen. So another Met premiere, Maria Stuarda. This was kind of a summit mountaintop experience for me as she leaves this, the, the black robe and underneath she's wearing this red nightgown essentially. And it was historically accurate. It was Mary's real sense of defiance to the usurper of the throne. They take my wig off and you see the age, you see the decrepit state of Mary of what it was to be incarcerated. The power of the audience seeing that revelation, the reveal of the costume at the end, it said everything. Keep the reveal part in there. Gold leaf, anyone? So I was playing Sycorax and this character was so phenomenal because she was a sorceress. And she aged in reverse as the show went on. From old swamp woman coming back, regaining her power into the full regalia of her pure sorceressness. Kevin, our amazing costume designer, came up with the idea of gold leaf being put all over me. He said, you know, Joyce, some people say less is more. I believe more is more. It was phenomenal, so much fun. Cendrillon. The dress was made to look like it was built out of the ashes. So it was this beautiful ombre effect, dark gray around the bottom, the big, huge, amazing uh, hoop skirt. And it faded up into almost completely nude at the top. I remember talking to Laurent, he not only directed, but he designed the costumes to perfection. He said Cinderella's, Cendrillon's beauty is hers. She didn't need anything else other than herself. And to this day, it's one of the most beautiful gowns I have ever worn. I should have my sunglasses. Can I do that? Agrippina. One of my all-time favorite characters. It was a production also by Sir David McVicker, but it was a production that he worked on over 20 years ago. It was me, a giant, what was meant to be marble tomb on the stage of the Metropolitan Opera, and me in that black negligee, playing and toying with the entire audience all at once. It was the most fun I've ever had in my life, even though she was having a mad scene breaking down. Thank you, David. As I stepped into the world of Virginia Woolf. They told me I would be wearing a knitted cardigan. If you're gonna find one piece of clothing that is the farthest thing from my personality, it is a knitted cardigan. It's just not anything that I would put on and say, yeah, I feel like ready to take on the world. That emerged for me in the role of Virginia as her safety blanket. I could put the hands in the pocket and get a little bit of control back in the scene. 
Even if I didn't know any of the score, I knew who Virginia was, just because of that costume alone. I pride myself on being able to inhabit a character, but it should never go for granted the power of what a costume can do. All right, goodbye.